So welcome to another screencast about optimization problems. In this optimization problem, we have a landscape architect wishing to enclose a rectangular garden on one side by a brick wall that costs $30 a foot, and on the other three sides by a metal fence that costs $10 a foot. We want the area of the garden to stay at 1,000 square feet, and then we want to minimize the cost. Okay, so this is definitely an optimization problem because we're seeking a minimum of something, not even the cost. That is, that is the quantity I am trying to optimize, cost. And so one of the immediate goals I'm going to have to do is get a uh, formula for the thing I'm trying to minimize. I need to get a formula for cost. Cost is sort of my target here. All right, let's play with the problem a little bit. A picture will really go a long way on this. So uh, let's draw a little rectangle here, like so. Uh, try not to make it square, but there's my rectangle. And uh, this is not uh, the same materials all over, though. One side of this rectangle, let's say it's this one down here. I'll draw it a nice brick red. So that one side is made out of brick, and it costs more than the other. So I'm just going to label what I've got here. Uh, this side here costs $30 uh, per linear foot. The other three sides are $10 a foot. So let me just put that on there. $10 a foot here, $10 a foot here. And the, uh, the area is locked in at 1,000 square feet. So somehow or another, I have to get uh, a formula for cost. Um, and this area here is 1,000. So what really changes in this problem are the dimensions of the rectangle, right? I mean, that's what we're trying to find, the dimensions, the uh, width and length of this uh, garden here. We don't know what they are, but they're important, so let's label them. Let's call this side x and this side y. Now, this side also up here has length x, and this side has length y. Do note, though, that although this side and this side are the same length, they are not the same cost. So remember, cost is what we're really interested in. So if I'm trying to find a formula for cost, I might just try uh, thinking about how much would each side individually cost. Well, let's take uh, this side here, uh, for instance. It's y feet long and $10 a feet. $10 a feet, $10 per foot. Uh, so what's the total cost? Well, it's $10 a foot times y feet. The cost would be 10 y dollars. For example, if this side length is uh, 20 feet long, it would cost $200, $10 a foot. The same would go over, be true for this other side. So I'm sort of thinking about what's the total cost. So far, this side plus this side cost me this much. Now let's account for the uh, two remaining sides. This side up here on the top is also $10 a foot, and it's x units long. So I would have to add on 10 times x to my cost. And then finally, down here, the length is x, and the cost is per foot is greater. It's $30 a foot. So I'd have to add on 30x. And that is actually my formula for cost. In one sense, I've sort of gotten the immediate goal here uh, already solved. I do have a formula for cost. If I know the x and y, then I can plug those in and find out what the cost is in dollars. Okay. Now, uh, let's clean this up a little bit. So c is, I got 10y plus 10y, that's 20y. And then 10x plus 30x, that's 40x. Now, just like a lot of optimization problems, I have my target formula here, cost, it's a function, that's great, but it's a function of two variables, which means I am restricted, I can't use calculus on that. I need to look up in the problem and find some sort of constraint, some sort of relationship between the input variables here that will allow me to make a substitution. Now, the one piece of information we haven't used yet is that the area of this rectangle is 1,000 square feet. Now, on the one hand, the area is 1,000 square feet. On the other hand, the area, it's a rectangle, so the area is x times y. So this right here is a very important constraint. Uh, we want to take a good look at this, and that's where we're going to get a substitution from. We can, for example, solve this uh, constraint for y and get y equals 1,000 over x. And then, since I have y in my formula, I can take 1,000 over x and just simply replace it in my cost formula. So let's go over here and write down what we know so far. So the cost is uh, 20 times I used to call it y, now I'm calling it 1,000 divided by x plus 40x. Now already, I'm going to work here and clean this up a little bit, but already I see this is good news because now I have cost as a function of one variable. And that's good because now I can use calculus to find its minimum, which is what I'm really after here. So here's my formula for cost. To get the minimum, I'm going to need some room for this, box it off. Uh, to get the minimum, I'm going to need to look at the uh, first derivative of this function, find the critical numbers, and then test them to see if I get an absolute minimum on costs somewhere. So C prime, let's see, this is 20,000 times x to the negative 1, if you want to think of it that way. So C prime is negative 20,000 
times x to the negative 2, and the derivative of this is just 40. Okay, so my critical numbers here are places where the derivative is either zero or undefined. Uh, the derivative could be undefined if x is equal to zero, because zero to the negative two doesn't exist. But an x equal to zero doesn't really make any sense in the problem, because you have to have some you know, length for this uh, side here to even have a garden defense off. So zero isn't really in play. Uh, if I set the derivative equal to zero, then uh, I'll get another critical number, I believe. So that would give me... Uh, let's see, I'd have 40 equals 20,000 x squared. Just add this negative term to both sides. x not x squared, but x to the negative 2. Multiply both sides by, uh, by x squared, and I get 40x squared equals 20,000. That means that x squared equals 500. And so x is the square root of 500, or plus or minus square root of 500. Obviously, the negative uh, part of that can't really be in play. Uh, the square root of 500 is about 22.36 feet. Now that's a critical number, uh, but I don't know if I actually get a minimum there yet or not. So I'm going to go and uh, look at the first derivative and use the first derivative test. So let's make a little number line here and plot my uh, x value, 22.36, right there. And let's test to the left and the right. So let's pick a nice round number, say uh, c prime of 20. And plug, take 20 put it into C prime, uh, you'll find that equals uh, negative 10, or is pretty close to equaling negative 10. It's certainly negative, whatever the case may be. And on this side, if I choose a test point, say 30, C prime of 30 is uh, about equal to 17.8. It's positive, so I get a positive first derivative on this side. So zero first derivative of the critical number. It's the only critical number. So this makes it a local ma minimum value. I have a decreasing function, C prime is negative, and then it changes to increasing, c prime is positive. That makes it a local minimum uh, <coughs> here at 22.36. Is it an absolute minimum? We hope so. And the answer is yes, because it's the only critical number there is. The function is decreasing for all values up to that point and increasing for all values afterwards. That makes 22.36 an absolute, or that, that, that makes c have an absolute minimum value. And now to answer the question, find the dimensions, both of them, of the garden, I need to take my 22.36 feet and uh, find out what the y was. So the y, uh, where was it? It's right here. It's 1,000 over that. Okay, so 1,000 over uh, 22.36. That will come out to be about 44.73. It's actually double uh, the uh, x value in this case. Okay? So we definitely know through calculus that the cost of this garden is minimized uh, absolutely when the x value, the length of the brick wall side, is 22.36 feet and the length of the adjacent side is 44.73 feet.